part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Hi, everyone. Thanks for stopping by in the latest edition of Sable Brothers and the Baseline Podcast right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm John Sable. And I'm Scott Sable. Thank you for tuning in here on uh, this cold December day. And, you know, when you get cold days like this, Scott, it kind of makes you wonder and, and dream about baseball season. Oh, and- it most certainly does. I love this. This is the time of year, especially after the holidays. You're thinking spring training. You're thinking February and off to the races. And we're not at the holidays just quite yet. We're getting there. Um, but uh, hopefully uh, the Cleveland Guardians can get us a, a gift under the tree or so in the form of some, a roster addition. We'll, we'll get right into that with Assistant General Manager with the Cleveland Guardians. Matt Foreman is our guest on our episode today. Hey, Matt, how you doing? Thanks for coming on, man. I'm doing well. John and Scott, thanks for having me. Thank you for taking the time. Um, we, you know, we talk a lot about baseball and everyone has, no matter if you're baseball or in broadcasting like us, Matt, we always find interesting, you know, everyone has different paths to get to where they are. You are, from my research, is very interesting because you are working as what, and correct me if I'm wrong, a freelance contributor, editor, intern with Baseball America at one point in time before getting into the front office. Is that right? Yeah, you did your homework. Yeah, that is incredible. How did that happen? (laughs) Yeah, so I I actually interned at Baseball America um, after my freshman year of college and then continued working for them um, as a freelance contributor for for a number of years. you know, eventually before transitioning into an internship with the Guardians. Very cool. So was working in baseball growing up in Philly always your your ultimate goal? Yeah, you know, I, I um, at the time, I didn't really know what jobs existed within baseball. I didn't really know whether I had the, uh, the qualifications to work within baseball. And so, um, you know, I, I really, at the time, wanted to to marry two of my passions, which were baseball and sports and writing. Um, and baseball America gave me a great platform to showcase some of the things that, um, were interesting to me about the game. And I give the, you know, the, the Cleveland baseball organization, a lot of credit for seeking, um, you know, people with diverse skill sets and experiences and backgrounds. Um, you know, certainly my hire at the time was a little bit outside the box. And I think, even to this day as an organization, we're looking for people with different skill sets who can make a contribution to the organization. So at the time, it wasn't really on my radar um, until it was right in the the forefront of of possibilities and um, certainly enjoy having a chance to do what I do now. So you'll be entering in your 11th season with the Guardians, seventh as assistant GM. You've seen your share of good baseball here in town. Do you have a favorite memory or two from your time here thus far? Yeah, I think some of the... um, some of the greatest memories are sharing postseason experiences with um, staff members, uh, coaches, scouts, uh, with players, and and with family. I think you know so much of um, in the postseason, so much of the work is done, so to speak. There's not much we can do from a front office perspective to influence the outcomes on on the game, and so we kind of get the luxury or privilege to watch the game as a, as a fan and really enjoy those experiences. And some of the the things that stand out to me are the memories that were formed. Um, because of the, the work that had been done by so many people across the organization to put us in that position. And also, um, you know, building those, those memories with my, my family, going to those, uh, you know, memorable postseason experiences uh, certainly stands out. Hey, it's been a fun offseason for you guys. Uh, hire a new manager. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, the more pressing uh, news or the, the newest news is winning the draft lottery, getting the number one overall pick in the upcoming draft later this uh, coming summer. Where were you when that happened? And how shocked were you? <laughs> Certainly uh, surprised, right? I think the the chances going into the day of us um, winning the first overall pick were about 2%. And even our chances of being in the top six were um, not that high. I think less than less than 10%. So um, just on the odds, I, I was I was pretty surprised. Um, to answer your first question, um, you know, we were at the winter meetings, uh, the draft broadcast, the lottery for the draft broadcast happened while we were at the winter meetings. And so, um, you know, our director of media relations, Bart Swain, had called me 30 or 40 minutes, maybe before the broadcast was supposed to go live. And Bart said, um, hey, where are you? What are you doing right now? Um, where, you know, where's Chris, Chris Antonetti? Where's Mike Chernoff? 
kind of started poking around and, and asking some peculiar questions I, I wasn't expecting. And um, as we got closer and closer to the broadcast, it became a little bit more clear to me what might be happening. Um, and so I had a little bit of a of an advance notice as a result of of that. But then, um, you know, the majority of our baseball operations group who was at the winter meetings gathered in a um, hotel suite to watch the broadcast together and, um, you know, saw the news unfold just like everybody else did. And, and when that happened, there was obviously collective excitement and, and anticipation for the opportunity to, to have the first pick, which is something as an organization we, we haven't, uh, haven't had the, the privilege to do. All right, if you're looking for a perfect holiday gift for this holiday season, look no further than the Columbus-based company Homage. We've teamed up with them here on the podcast to uh, bring you some great products. They were nice enough, Scott, to send us uh, some shirts. Yeah, and I love the shirt I got. It's a it's a it's a Cleveland Guardians, um, and it's it's really cool. I mean, it fits well. You know, some of the shirts you always find a shirt that you know maybe just just doesn't fit right. These fit perfect. And, the, you know, they allow you to breathe, too, because I'm a guy who gets kind of hot. And these are the shirts that you want to wear, especially when you're working, say, in the office in the middle of the wintertime when it might get a little warm. Somebody turns with the thermostat or if you want to wear outside on a nice day like today when it's 50 degrees. Just perfect shirt. Nice and comfortable. Yeah, high quality shirts. I've had mm-hmm. some Ohio State shirts. They sent me a Cavs one that's really cool. Yep. The old Cavs, uh, a gold font from the 70s style on there. They've got NBA, MLB, college NFL, um, a lot of cool, you know, comic book style shirts, hand drawn mm-hmm. designs, great quality from uh, our friends over at Homage. So if you're looking for a holiday gift, go ahead to homage.com. Go on our show notes here, wherever you're listening to your podcast, whether it's on Spotify or Apple, or click the episode here and then use that link in the show notes that we're providing you to go ahead and uh, purchase your latest homage gear. They just not only just have the shirts, but they've got cool sweatpants, sweatshirts, exactly. uh, really, really cool stuff as well. One of my favorites ones, Scott, you, you always comment on it when I wear it is that Cavs NBA jam shirt that has the, you know, right. stats of Mark Price and Brad Doherty. Love that. Cool. I remember that you used, used to play NBA jam all the time in the basement. So this brings back a lot of good memories, a lot of good retro stuff too. love it. Yeah, they've expanded that now to the NFL Jam and MLB oh, nice. Jam, too. So a lot of cool stuff there with our friends from Homage uh, based out in Columbus. You purchase them at homage.com, but go on our show notes and click that link there to get your latest and greatest Homage merchandise that will provide a perfect holiday gift this holiday season. Hi, everybody. It's John Tellich from the Guardians of the Land MLB podcast. Be sure to hop on with us to follow all the dramatic developments of the reigning American League Central Division champions. From game analysis, to interviews, to keeping tabs on who could be the next breakout star. We'll have that and much, much more right here. It's the Guardians of the Land MLB podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Subscribe here and join the fun. What's up, everyone? Chase Smith here, host of the Chase Smith Podcast, and my podcast reflects who I am. My hobbies, my interests, my passions, my curiosities, my careers, my questions, and my family. I'll spend time talking about all types of sports, movies, TV shows, trending news stories, and other cultural events, and even faith. This is who I am, and I hope I can get to know you as well. Join me on the Chase Smith Podcast, and let's have some thought-provoking conversations only on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hey, everybody. It's Sam Amico from Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. Be sure to give us a listen for all your Cleveland Cavaliers recaps, analysis, breakdowns, draft talk, free agency. The list goes on and on. Give us a listen, Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. So explain to us the process, how the organization zeroed in on this new young manager and how does he fit in? Yeah, so I I think um, we started with a list of about 50 candidates. And um, so we started pretty broad. Um, Stephen Vogt was on our preliminary list and um, we got to know Stephen and others through a range of reference calls with trusted contacts across the game. And then eventually, as we whittled things down, we spent time uh, with candidates in person. 
Um, and we really enjoyed getting to know Stephen. I think from the from the outset of the process, we were really looking to identify three primary characteristics. We were looking for a, um, a caring connector, a collaborative partner, and a self-confident learner. And Stephen really embodied all of those characteristics. I think when you talk to people across the game about Stephen, one of the, the consistent themes we heard was he, he's one of the best teammates I've ever been around. And I think that's a, a really high compliment that people could give, one of the highest compliments that people could give to, to a teammate. And I think, um, you know, Stephen, although his post-playing career has been brief, he's been thinking about um, what's important to him as a manager and building a managerial philosophy for probably 15 years, going back to his minor league career. And so he's thought deeply about the type of manager he wants to be, the type of env environment he wants to create. And, um, you know, he's been a member of the organization now for, I guess, a little over a month. And we've really enjoyed working with him, um, excited for, for the impact that he's going to make on the organization. I got to meet Stephen Vogt on the introductory press conference and was kind of blown away with his demeanor, personality, and his baseball acumen. I mean, th this guy is a mixture of old school and new school, and I'm really excited to see what he can do there. Yeah, great. Glad to glad to hear that. He he really does have a good way about him, and um, I think he's he's going to make a great uh, contribution as manager. You know, 2023 didn't go the way you guys wanted to because of all of the injuries that mounted in the starting rotation. Uh, I, I got to ask you a question with the rotation, though. You guys have a lot of young pieces. How uh, the depth, the big question with the depth and knowing how much that helped you guys with those young pieces coming up and those guys, how much knowing what the depth did last year impact your guys' short-term and long-term decisions on a guy like a Shane Bieber? Yeah, so I, I mean, I think you're, I think you're right. Like we were really um, excited about the development of um, three young starting pitchers last year, and um, you know Logan Allen, Tanner Bybee, and Gavin Williams, who started the year in the minor leagues and ended up. You know, we asked a lot of of those guys to carry the bulk of innings throughout um, throughout the season. They really um, stepped up and and um, continued getting better throughout the year, but also um, it really impacted us. And I think, you know, in your broader question about, about depth, um, there's an old baseball adage that you probably know, which is you can't have enough pitching, right? And um, I think we ended up relying on 30 different pitchers last year and 14 different starting pitchers last year. And so, you know, from a, from a um, team building standpoint, we really try to do what we can to prepare our, our staff to be resilient because inevitably there are going to be ups and downs and we're going to need a lot of, uh, a lot of different people to contribute to get through the season. You know, finding and developing a power hitting outfield bat has been a challenge for a long time. I mean, you know, my brother and I remember when Manny Ramirez was uh, probably arguably the last guy. I mean, we've had guys in between like Michael Brantley and, and a few others, but you know, they were here for maybe a few years and um, you know, and then, and then maybe weren't quite like him not to use Manny Ramirez as an example, but uh, do you feel the young guys uh, coming up here, you know, have, uh, you know, and, and down in the system can fill that void, maybe a lot like the people I just mentioned, but at least, you know, bring, ha have a positive and a, and a significant impact here in the short term. Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, I think there's a lot of attention paid to, you know, power hitting profiles. And um, I think we're looking for the most well-rounded contributors, the best, <laughs> the best overall players we, we can, whether that comes through um, power or other forms of production. Um, certainly, you know, guys who hit the ball over the fence are, are, uh, are nice to have, but, um, yeah, I think we have a group of players who are returning, uh, to our major league team who are excited to see their continued development and, uh, the impact they can make on us this year. And then there are a wave of players, um, in the upper levels of the minor leagues who may not have had a chance yet, but, um, you know, we're, we're optimistic about the, the impact that they can make on us in 2024 and beyond. How does that Sheho Itani contract affect or maybe reshape the free agent landscape in the future? And, and yeah, how was so, your how was your reaction to that deal too? I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think um, time will tell <laughs> on right. the impact. I, I mean, Shohei Otani is a unique and generational talent, um, just a special player, and um, you know, I think he signed a unique contract all the details of of the contract are still 
kind of being reported now. And so um, I think time will time will tell <laughs> the the true impact of of his contract. But other than that, I'm, I'm not really sure. So I know there's a lot of people and we hear it all the time who poo poo analytics now. And I always tell my brother this and I always say, I'm an analytics guy. I like science. I like numbers. I remember reading Bill James back in the late eighties. That's how much of a nerd I was back in the day. And then, you know, baseball perspectives all the way up. And, you know, it took a while for that to get into front offices. Um, could you give us an example of how the organization uses analytics on a daily basis for players? In other words, start with the acquisition of whatever data you're measuring and how you take that data, disseminate it. And then how do the players <clears throat> receive it? And then how is that applied, uh, you know, on the field? Yeah, that's a really good question. And one, if you're, if you're reading the Bill James handbook and familiar with baseball perspectives, you, you could probably speak to this, but um, I'll try to give a, um, a concrete example mm -hmm. of, sure. of this. I mean, I think um, in, in major league parks, there are, there's the stat cast system. Mm -hmm. um, which utilizes a technology called Hawkeye that's tracking ball flight at a hundred frames per second. That's tracking player movement, um, at 50 frames per second, right? And so it's a, it's a 12 to 14 camera radar based system. That's tracking everything that's happening on the field. And, um, you know, for, for your question, we have to, you know, uh, ingest the data, store the data, make sense of the data, but, but all of that's in service of um, helping players get better, make improvements. Right. And so we could, um, to be more specific, we could say these ball flight characteristics are most uh, likely to lead to future success, or these pitch usages are most likely to lead to future success. And so we can work with, uh, with a pitcher as an example and say, um, Let's make these slight. Let's see if these slight modifications to your pitch profile or your pitch mix um, could lead to performance enhancements. And and so that's the uh, a short version of a, mm -hmm. of a bigger challenge we face of collecting and aggregating and making sense of and then applying uh, data to help ultimately help players make improvements. And there's a lot of this data that you can get online. I'm sure there's a lot of this data though that is extremely proprietary. Am I correct? Sure. Yeah, we try to make sense of um, all of the publicly available stuff, and then also mm -hmm. the the um, you know the proprietary stuff. We're mm -hmm. we're trying to blend all of that um, again in service of helping players be the best versions of themselves. Gotcha. Matt, I know you're up against it. This has been a real pleasure for my brother and I to talk to you, and because uh, we really wanted to get uh, just a, a peek behind the curtain, and uh, and you gave us that peek here, um, and it kind of whets our appetite for what's coming here as we head into 2024. Matt, thank you so much for joining us in our podcast. Best of luck this season, and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great. Thanks so much, guys. Look forward to visiting with you in the future. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Matt. And thank you for tuning in to the latest edition of Sable Brothers on the Baseline Podcast right here on the Press Play Podcast Network. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow the pod at Sable Brothers on Twitter. Follow yours truly at John underscore Sable. And you can follow me at Scott Sable Fox 8. Thanks again, everybody, and have a great day.